In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we'll have Epic's amazing Unreal Engine 5. I am hearing myself in the speaker. On a PS5, no less. Dell's gorgeous 2020 XPS 15 and 17, the Radeon Pro 7, and Microsoft's Surface devices, the new ones. Next. Welcome back to yet another fine episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks. And uh, yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but we can't seem to get ourselves organized today because someone has a case of the giggles, Marco. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, come on. Keep going. Keep going. That's, that's it. You, that's, that's all you, you got. Up. That's all you got. That's it. You didn't that's set all anything that's, else that's up. All that's you just make it fun of me. Yeah, I need to put my camera down. Uh, look at that. See that? That's like real-time adjustments for you people. You know? Let's go this way, too. Okay. We'll there we go. Live. Do it. We're doing it live. F it. We're doing it live. <laughs> Chris, how you doing? Um, I am dipping into coffee at 5 in the evening because I'm barely keeping my head up. Chris, we're simpatico. There we go. I have I have a cup of coffee with some friggin' chocolate collagen in there, at least to make it taste a little savory. Not bad. I was actually watching a video the other day about adding salt to coffee in very, very tiny amounts to fix absolutely horrible coffee. But I don't know so if I'm you brave gotta, enough to you try gotta that add myself. This, you gotta that add true? the salt. You gotta add the salt while you're brewing. I add a little salt when I'm doing espresso on the stove because it yeah. takes away some of the bitterness. Right. Really? Yes, to counteract the bitter. How how much? Just like a pinch? Just a like, pinch. Yeah, barely a pinch. Um, and it's easy to overdo it. But if you have good coffee, you don't you definitely don't need to do that. Cool. You guys you guys want to continue with the Susie Happy Homemaker show tips or what? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, this is Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, uh, where we we talk tech, generally speaking. But um, yeah, we're a little bit off track, obviously, as you can see. I'm Dave Altavilla. With me, as always, is Marco Cipetta and, of course, Chris Getting, partners in crime at hothardware.com. And, um, yeah, we we do the, the tech thing. There's lots going on in tech, don't you know, uh, this week. We are actually out straight with unveils and announcements um, from NVIDIA gtc to all kinds of stuff coming um but uh today today we're going to talk about some stuff that really dropped dropped our jaw um hardware and some game software um well let's uh let's dig right into the uh early fun stuff the eye candy as it were epic's amazing unreal engine 5 ps5 demo will leave you slack jawed and drooling at least we think you will and uh, for that RDNA 2 goodness that was powering it on the PlayStation 5, uh, powered by AMD. And there it is. And my goodness, a, a Lara Croft-like character, I would say, wouldn't you, fellas? Um, yes. And Chris, mm -hmm. you, can, you can fade that footage in from time to time here. But um, yeah, um, photorealistic, I guess, would be the would be the the word I, I think of when I look at this thing from the terrain to the character animations, to the facial animations on the character. Um, holy God, the folks at unreal, um, do some amazing stuff in a game engine these days you and do it. Say it's unreal. That's it. They do some unreal stuff and they do it with what's impressive about what, what always impressed me about the unreal engines time and time again is how efficient on compute resources they are and this thing of course is running on a console looking like really a, a real-time rendered movie i mean it's that good and we always say every year it's like you know every time there's a new graphics evolution or what have you technology whether it's ray tracing or anything we always say man this this is Closer to you know real time rendered animation and and you know cinema cinema quality graphics. No, this this is damn close. What do you guys I mean, think? What do you think, Marco? Yeah. Oh, what do you think, Chris? I'm sorry. Oh, well, Jump just just saying the the lighting <laughs> here is just gorgeous. The way they have it bouncing around with the environmental illumination, um, it just really adds that um, just gorgeous aspect to the quality of the coloring and rendering and everything else. Um, 
in a way that we haven't really seen in games too much. I mean, even with the ray tracing we've had, it's come, you know, towards this direction, but this level of execution is just on another level. It's really impressive to see. Um, and the way it's preserving the highlights and the shadows, and you're kind of able to discern them as if it was, you know, taking a photo with probably a higher dynamic range captured or, you know, presented there than most cameras can actually capture. Um, so it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And they don't talk about ray tracing at all in this tech demo. Um, it's they talk, oh, they do? Uh, yes, they, they, it's it's I thought, mu I thought multi bounce global illumination. They 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 explain that right in the very beginning. Multi bounce multi global illumination. Okay, but that's what I'm wondering. Is it is it traditional ray trace global illumination? Because we've heard of various ways to you know global illuminate and multi bounce and all that stuff. Is this traditional ray tracing? It's a step above simple ray tracing. Global illumination, true dynamic uh, global illumination, multi bounce with no light maps, no pre baked uh, lighting at all. So it's it's like more it's it's above traditional ray tracing if if you can put it that way, real real time, um, yeah, um, global lighting with multi bounce off off of any object in the scene that kind of thing. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, with with specular highlights on you know on reflective surfaces. It it really it. The way they explain now, I, I don't remember. I'd have to watch it again. I don't remember seeing any water or reflections. Um, there, there is in there, a bit with water. Let me see. There was a bit with it. water. So yeah, but there was it. It, it was explained as as true multi bounce uh, multi bounce dynamic global illumination, which is like as advanced as it gets. Yeah, I mean, and it looks absolutely fantastic. The other thing, again, that caught my eye was the character water. animations. Water looks. Look at those reflections. Absolutely stellar. The character animation. Are there are there reflections? Yeah, you like can see the lighting change here. Okay. Uh, so as there are, kicking, but you see it ripple in the water. Look at the right. look at the look at the geometry of the water though as she's kicking through. Like that water, like a lot of times when you when you get you know when you break water in a game engine, it it looks okay. It you know it moves around you. It doesn't, but it never really looks like that. Looked really, you know, real like fluid, like how it was reacting to the way when she stepped immediately and breaking and then going off in different directions. There's definitely a really good geometry engine going on here too. Yeah. So I think they explained, so th there's two things there was, I think I might explain this incorrectly, but th there's like the geometry engine they called nanite in there. Then the lighting engine they called lumen physics and, is what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. And then so, but in terms of, of the animation system, they did mention a, a predictive foot placement, uh, mechanism in there with motion warping so you know as a character is animated and, and interacting with the environment it's sort of predicting where the foot's going to go which is why you get that perfect animation as the foot hits the water yeah and, and then you see how with the hand yes. yeah yeah that was awesome when when she the, the hand touches the door and then that's a pre i guess that's a pre-rendered they said that was a pre-rendered animation effect yeah, right. seamless uh, contextual animation effects, they called that. Yeah. Dude, you were taking notes on this, huh? I was slack joy, <laughs> dude. Like, I watched it and went, holy crap. Like, if you if you really watch, you'll see some weird warping in the terrain when they're just panning the rocks. Like, it's not perfect. It's almost like you can tell it's, 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 it's mapped onto geometry. But, yeah, like, that looks really really impressive and you gotta and also keep in mind as you mentioned in the beginning that was running real time on early playstation 5 hardware so yeah. amd rdna2 gpu technology we don't have full details on that so like we can't speculate too much um you know eight core ryzen uh, i think it was a it's a zen 2 based eight core cpu in there yeah but obviously you know we're early in the process unreal engine 5 is early in the process not going to be available till next year and that just looked nuts to me. Like I was literally like, "Wow, that looks amazing!" And now, th the first batch of our DNA two GPUs on the PC, you can bet the farm they're going to be more powerful than what's in the PlayStation Five. You know, that's console level graphics. If if Big Navi's our DNA two and has those features, man, that's going to be a b potential beast. <laughs> so. So we talked about this a little bit, and I want to I want to kick this around and 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 get your opinion again, and then get Chris's on this too. So, 
you know, our headline talked about, you know, drooling for our DNA too. In other words, the, the graphics technology that can make this real. Um, but, but what, again, what I fall back on, on with this is that this is an unreal engine demo on yes, console hardware powered by AMD. Unreal engine is a super efficient game engine. And to me, and, and you know, unless we talk about some specialized rendering effects that are engineered for the GPU or the, the GPU vice versa, you know, for the for the effect, you would think this thing could run on a pretty mid-range base PC GPU, you know, class GPU, because you're talking about certainly you're talking about next generation GPU technology, but in a console, so it's got to be scaled back. You got some thermal. Uh, uh, you know, constraints you got to deal with there. Do do we think there's specialized hardware engines that are rendering some some new mojo here, or is this sort of hey, this is what this is what Unreal Engine five is, and it's going to run on on anything with a decent amount of current gen DX twelve horsepower? Yeah, I mean, Un Unreal Engine four has RTX, you know, N Nvidia proprietary rtx tech built in so it's not beyond epic to bake in proprietary tech to exploit new hardware um i would bet the farm the reason that this was shown on playstation 5 and it's such an early build of ue5 was because there's specific hardware in that system that can accelerate some of the tech that was shown off in the demo now that's not to say other hardware can't run it but can it accelerate everything that was shown uh, in real time and provide smooth frame rates is the question. You know, you can run RTX tech on Pascal. You don't want to do it, you know. So don't don't tell me what to do. I, I will tell you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, what what else occurred to us at this thing? I mean, I, the facial animations. I don't know if you can get that on screen, Chris. Um, that was in the beginning, I think. Um, the beginning of the clip, they show yeah, okay. a close up of her face talking. Again, another level of fluidity. Like looking at that, you're talking really, you know, Toy Story kind of animation. That kind of obviously, it's not completely. Um, photorealistic to life there's a little bit of a how else do i say it you know sort of cartoony look to her right yeah the uncanny valley or whatever that's saying is right like but you would you would think if they wanted to make it like look like as close to a human as possible they probably could because the i mean it just looks fantastic oh my god it looks awesome and you know it looks better than the older toy stories that's for sure you know it's not on the level of you know the latest disney pixar movies but that it, it just looks amazing if that is what a game is going to look like on playstation 5 that's awesome and then you know xbox the the, the upcoming xbox theoretically or at least according to rumors has more horsepower than playstation 5 and as we know the pc whether it does right away or a few months later will leapfrog the performance of these consoles Wow. <laughs> yeah. Real, right. You know, there's going to be some gorgeous visuals in games next year. Well, and I think what was also very interesting is when they talk about bringing assets into the game where they just, you know, basically import a bunch of photographs to create the 3D models. So you don't have to hand model it. But more importantly, the they don't have to go through the process of creating normal maps and other kinds of fake textures to create depths. Like, right. They can just have the polygons. Exactly. That, that's renders. another thing they mentioned is, is importing just the high quality models right from the tools and not having to, you know, have an approximation for the game engine. It it, it really yeah. it, it could ease development and up the up the game in terms of graphics. Like it's just, Sorry, just the way it was the light awesome. Like is around in this. Yeah, scene. look at that it's lighting. Just, that looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's some impressive stuff. I'll drop a link into the chat. Um, this is a story we did a few weeks back, maybe a couple months back, on um, Unreal Engine and its role in the cinematography and um, set generation of The Mandalorian. Um, and 
you know, that's what we talk about, you know, cinema quality graphics. Well, guess what? You know, real movie studios <laughs> are now using game engines to render 360 virtual sets, which is what uh, that article I dropped into the into the chat shows you. Look at that, man. That's that's a yep. 360 degree set that's rendered virtually around the character and and the characters if you if you uh, watch the video i think there's a video embedded in that article um yeah um you don't have to fire it up chris but you know the point is the character the um the actors will talk about how this is like total game changer like i'm walking on a set but 360 degree view you know virtualized rendered around them uh totally immersing the the actor as well so fascinating stuff and it's great to see the folks at epic still uh you know really driving the curve i mean they just they just put out a year after year every time we i think we've seen this how many years now marco and, and a lot of time it's aligned with nvidia launches interesting that that amd's in on the action here with the console um but every time we see an unreal engine demo it's like wow <laughs> oh man like, it, a new it, new unreal yeah since since before it was Unreal Engine, when when the game Unreal came out way back in the 3D effects days, you know, from then on, it's always been a leader in terms of, of you know, graphics technology just for decades now. So yeah. and this one, like for, you know, we're, we're we're cynical, spoiled, you know, tech guys for for us to go, whoa, it's got to be yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> man. yeah, that looked right. awesome. Yeah, we're we're so used to being pixel snobs and and peering at everything and looking at anti-aliasing and artifacts and you know whatever we can see that's not quite right. Uh, yeah, this is like yeah, as as the headline says, slack jawed and drooling. That's what we were. Good stuff. Bring it, bring it, uh, PlayStation, and bring it Epic and uh, bring it AMD. We we love to see it. <clears throat> All right, let's um. Let's move on to something else we'd love to see today that was also pretty darn gorgeous. Dell's gorgeous 2020 XPS 15 and 17 unveiled with super thin Infinity Edge displays, Intel 10th Gen, and RTX 2060 on the high-end GPUs. Um, yeah, we'll drop that into the uh, into the, the chat as well. Chris, I don't know if you can pull it up. but I'll oh, um, get it in a sec. Yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, um, Dell stepped out with um, a refresh of the XPS 13 earlier this year. Beautiful machine. Um, I actually have it over here. But there's the 15 up top <clears throat> and the 17 now also refreshed and redesigned. And that's that's kind of the key with these two machines as well as the 13 before it, the, the smallest of the siblings. Um these have been completely redesigned from the chassis. There's Chris holding the 15. Uh, completely 17. Oh, 17. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yep. Uh, so, completely redesigned in the chassis. Away. I don't know if you can see it that well on the camera, but um, as you can see, the Infinity Edge display now is near bezel-less on all four sides. So down the bottom as well by the keyboard, super thin bezel down there. They do have the webcam up top. Fear not, no nose cam. Uh, it is a tiny 720p Windows Hello capable camera on the top bezel. <laughs> um, yeah, just um, really nicely designed. They also have, Chris, you can probably, I don't know if you can do a little uh, flippy on the, the back edge to show the machined aluminum um, edges. They have laser etched polished aluminum edges a little bit of focus there buddy if you can back uh, off a little bit there, <laughs> there you go there you go so there's kind of a racy sort of bevel to it um and uh just really you know completely redesigned um you know uh, chassis so good looking stuff and still have the sd card slot wherever here you know and that i'm sorry so happy. but lenovo take note yes um, SD card slots are, are very usable, but Chris, you're, you're holding that thing. What do you, what do you think about that, uh, that 17 inch bad boy? Yeah. So, um, it's gorgeous. I've liked the XPS, uh, design since they kind of introduced the newer models back in what, 2014, <clears throat> 2015. This is a refresh of that design still, but still very similar aluminum chassis. Um, it's got the carbon fiber, um, whatever palm rest you want to call it um yep. 
One thing I really like on this is they've moved the speakers up top so they're facing you. Where previous models, they had them kind of downward facing off the table. You got some muddied audio of that. Um, yeah. It's a lot nicer on this now. Removing the bottom bezel is just like so much re screen real estate. This one is the 4K display, um, but it's, well, 4K plus because it's a uh, taller aspect ratio. It's a uh, 1610. 1610, yeah. Yeah. So lots and lots of space to get work done on this. And then these really are workhorse machines. They're for photo editing, video editing, rendering. I mean, they can handle it. It's, you know, as powerful as most desktops you're seeing out there in an ultrabook form factor, um, yeah. at least on paper. So we've still got to put it through our tests to see how it holds up. But um, based off, previous xps machines i have pretty high expectations yeah yeah no absolutely and, and the nice thing about these now as well i'm not sure if the prior gen had um soldered ram but um but this machine has uh, two sodium sockets can take up to 64 gigs in the 17 i wonder i think the 15 might as well I have to look it up um yeah, I but know i know this, this one has the 64 gigs which is awesome yeah, the 15 actually offers uh, up to 64 gigs as well. So now you get up to 64 gigs of RAM configurable in a laptop and user serviceable in a laptop just by popping the back lid. They have an explosion up. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and, and, and toss that link to uh, one of our image gallery pages so you can see the explosion. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Chris. I got that. <clears throat> yeah, um, it is a hefty laptop compared to you know because i used to use the xps 13 as my daily laptop and then to move to this i mean it's five it's, and a half pounds yeah five and a half pounds but it's dense like it feels solid you could you know beat someone over the head with it no problem <laughs> not that i would do that but no of course not no uh and and on that one you have the 17 there's a geforce rtx 2060 is it max q or the full it fat just says 2060 so let me uh get signed in think, and double check but i think i think it is i think it's i think it's the standard 2060 and then the 15 <clears throat> has up to a uh, 1660 ti on board um so also a potent gpu for the for the 15 as well um, it is Max Q. And it, okay, Max Q, 2060 Max Q. Um, Kareem's asking in the chat any Ryzen powered XPS laptops. I have not heard of one. If I did, I probably couldn't tell you about it. I know the G5 from Dell's G series has already been announced with Ryzen on board, Ryzen 4000 on board, and we'll be kicking the tires on that shortly as well. Marco, thoughts on the new XPSs? Um, you know, Dell has been setting the standard in, uh, you know, Windows powered Ultrabooks for years now. And it's obvious if you look through the generations, they're taking customer feedback to heart. And, you know, over the last few generations, there's been minor quibbles with the designs, you know, like, as you mentioned, the, the webcam placement at the speaker placement that Chris mentioned. And it's Dell's obviously listening and making those minor tweaks now there's no perfect product but it's going it's really hard if you're shopping for a machine of that form factor to, to nitpick something wrong with it you know some some people may not like the amount of keyboard travel some people might not like you know whatever i'm just making stuff up fan noise so you're never going to please everybody but you're talking about some really gorgeous powerful notebooks and just to go back to you uh, answering Kareem's question, Joe asked a similar question. Um, no word <clears throat> on, on XPS Ryzen powered, but Dell is sort of leading in terms of uh, AMD integration in the G series. They're they're doing smart shift. They're doing um, some leading edge stuff in terms of what AMD offers for the total platform. So I would not be surprised if in the future there was something slick and you know sleek like an XPS class machine, maybe not branded XPS, but with Ryzen 4000 in it because we know it's coming to the gaming side. It's already been announced, but um, I think we have to see. I think Dell's had a lot of success with XPS and they don't want to you know rock the boat too much, but there's so much buzz around Ryzen. I, I, it's a big market opportunity, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, and you have to remember... Uh uh the the xps uh grand poobah as it were frank azor uh 
left Dell and and went to work for AMD, although he's the gaming grand poobah over there. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know the relationship is probably getting even tighter as a result of Frank uh, taking the reins up at AMD. Um, so yeah, and this is the 13, by the way. I w- I've been checking that out as of late. Let's go this so way. Yes, tiny by comparison, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what but, she said. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Had to go there. But yeah, the, the 13 is a beautiful machine, too. And again, that that camera up top is it, what they've done it, to get that thing in there. It's Windows Hello capable. So it's got, you know, the RF um, infrared rather, um, you know, all all built in super tiny up top. And isn't it interesting how before we were we would give it a pass for the nose cam right because we were like yeah nobody's using webcams on notebooks these days and they don't really need it you, you know and when you get home if you want to plug in a webcam you can always stick in a usb webcam or something like that if you get to the office but nobody's using it. well guess what you know now that we're all working from home and everybody's doing zoom meetings a webcam a lap, laptop webcam is pretty darn important <laughs> so yeah. these days how that changed quickly on a dime and so yeah the design fortunately uh was there to meet it but um yeah that's always hard to get this in the camera but yeah you know also a really well-made machine chris how do those speakers sound on top um they they sound very nice very full um there's a lot of bass i doubt that anything would come through because you know i've got the little mod mic yeah there, yeah, yeah pointing yeah. at my face but uh, when we run the full review, we'll definitely have some details on that. Yeah, that's what that's what occurred to me when I first saw the, the design as well. Um, and we've had a couple of uh, teaser videos up in our, our coverage. Um, is that those top mounted speakers, as you noted, should deliver some some better better boom for a laptop? So good stuff. And the and the fifteen. Um, <clears throat> Again, uh, is let's see what's the weight on the 15 before we move on. I think it's right around five pounds. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit lighter. Um, it's it's still not featherweight like the 13 is. Um, yeah, four four and a half pounds top end with the uh, the 4K touch. So four pounds to four and a half pounds depending on the on the config for the 15. Um, but yeah, good stuff from the folks at Dell. Um, we will have the review of the XPS 17 coming shortly, and uh, because Chris is kicking the tires on that right now, so stay tuned for that. And uh, let's move on to uh, to the land of AMD and um, and talk about the Radeon Pro 7 PCI Express 4 workstation card sizzles with 13.1 TFLOPS compute and 16 gigabytes of HBM2. Um, PCI Express 4, interesting. This is a, a Vega, 7 nanometer Vega GPU architecture. It is not Navi. Marco, what are your thoughts on this and uh, its potential with um, all its uh, compute horsepower that AMD's architecture is pretty well known for? So this is one of those things that, that make you go, hmm, and let me explain <laughs> why. Yeah. So yeah, you know, so as you mentioned, it's Vega, right? So it's basically the same GPU architecture as the Radeon 7, the 7 nanometer uh, Vega architecture with HBM memory, but it's got more memory. So it's got 16 gigs of HBM2 on board um, with ECC support, which is important for this this class of GPUs. Just let me get some some specs out of the way and then we'll talk about some of the the funky stuff going on. So the memory is attached over a a 4096-bit uh, interface. That's why you get this massive one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth with that HBM2. You have 3840 stream processors like the big uh, big Vega. Um, but what's interesting is this GPU is qualified for PCI Express 4 support. So now they, they didn't reveal too many details. I did specifically ask AMD during a briefing, is this a new rev or spin of the chip? Um, that's been validated for PCIe 4, and they seem to imply, yes, it's a new revision of, of the chip. Not a new architecture, Not and there's no architectural changes, but a new spin of the chip with PCIe 4 support, or at least validation for PCIe 4 support. But what's also really interesting is at the top of the cards, there's a new Infinity Fabric link for multi-GPU setups, and there wasn't a ton of detail given there either, but what I think that is going to do is a, it's, it's, it's a real high bandwidth link, and it allows for uh, unification of the memory. 
So you end up, if, if you do link two of them together with like massive compute horsepower, so a single one of these is 13.1 teraflops of a uh, single pre precision and 6.5 teraflops of double precision. So it's not the leading edge NVIDIA architecture in terms of graphics. It's not Navi. But you have 7 nanometer higher clocks you know, than previous gen Vegas. You have this massive compute performance because that's what Vega's strong suit was, plus that huge memory bandwidth, plus this new multi-GPU interface. Um, it seems like a real interesting card. For, for the target market, it's obviously going to be a beast, um, especially at its, I think it's going to be eighteen ninety nine, and it, they arrive next month. So you could pair two of these up for the price of, you know, one of the comparable quadros um, for less or half the price of the comparable quadros, according to AMD's numbers. But yeah, like it just, I would love to play with it. I want to, I need to experiment with it. it I kind of was like, why is this coming now with big Navi coming and, you know, Vega being, you know, such an older architecture, but. I think there's some secret sauce in there, or there's been some secret sauce in Vega that we just don't know about. That's what occurred to me. I mean, obviously, Vega with Vega, <clears throat> you get a um, even well seven nanometer Vega. You get a more optimized thermal, um, you know, profile with this thing and power profile, um, and and certainly PCI Express four might add to that a little bit. But that that's what occurred to me was, I'm like, okay. Why are we bringing out a Vega-based um, high-end pro card when Big Navi is on the horizon this year? Um, maybe they wanted to lead, you know, lead in with this earlier, and then we we will have a a Navi-based, a Big Navi-based pro card at some point. Um, but you you look at it, the specs on paper versus current Gen Quadro, and it's like it's it's pretty stout and you know the the available throughput uh compute resources on it is it's pretty stout um so yeah i mean you can't you're it's it's really just one of those things where you you, you sort of try and second guess the strategy here um but i don't know it's it competes favorably it'll be interesting to see it in the pro graphics benchmarks the pro viz uh the compute benchmarks um have we heard when they're going to be shipping? I'm trying to think. Next month. Next month. Okay. All right. So we'll know soon enough, won't we? I, yeah, I hope I get to play with one. It's you know AMD hasn't always. It's funny, like the the, the Radeon uh, Pro WX ninety one hundred didn't go around too much, but <clears> the <throat> cost reduced eighty two hundred did. So I don't know if these will be seated, but I would love to play with it just to see. Because you know the clocks are a little lower than the Vegas in the Max. So and during the the briefing, they mentioned lower temps than a Quadro, a c competitive Quadro RTX. So I, I'd be afraid that it's super loud. And yeah, but I, I need to play with it. You know, I'm, I'm speculating. I'm not sure. Yeah, Radi Radeon Seven. You know, consumer wasn't exactly the most quiet card. For that sure. was a th that was a three fan. You know, big boy. This is. Oh. When it's punching away in a data center, do you care about the volume that much? I mean, if it's in your workstation, that's one thing. Well, well it's, it's, this is a workstation card, though. It's a workstation it's not a card, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there'll be there'll be yeah. folks that'll do some compute on it for sure. Lots of compute on it, but um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 workstation, yeah. But uh, but cool stuff. Um, expensive, but uh, for folks that need it, it's got some serious horsepower. That the memory bandwidth is like off the hook. And then uh, they have up to 32 gigs available, that's two card, right? That's two cards linked. Two cards linked. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wonder why they couldn't get 32 gigs on a single card. Because NVIDIA bought it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't just say that. <laughs> you didn't. No, nah, you didn't say much. It's fine. Yeah. You didn't let any cats out of the bag. No, we'll, we'll just we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so we have a comment from another guy saying compute cards are CDNA, uh, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. That's why you don't see Navi for compute GPUs. There is a new compute architecture coming. It was just weird to see Vega come now when, I mean, the rumor mill has been churning. They've disclosed CDNA and they've talked about future GPUs. We know RDNA 2 and bigger chips are coming. 
there's no confirmation, but you know, it's a safe bet they're coming. So it was just weird to see Vega come now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what that's all about. And hopefully you get one in. I imagine if they're waving the flag, uh, seriously versus uh, nvidia in some of these specs and pricing comparisons you know half price card with you know way more uh, throughput and performance claimed um i would think they'd be pretty proud of it and want to seed it out right they should i would hope so yeah <laughs> i want it <laughs> we'll find out we'll find out um but in and we'll have to we'll have to Ping our friend who, by the way, we'll, we'll mention it now because it's appropriate on the subject of AMD. Uh, next week, uh, Friday, correct? The 22nd? Is that next week? Oh my gosh, that fast? Uh, yes. yes, next week. Yes. Wow. We will be next podcast. We will be conversing with Frank Azor from AMD. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, peppering him with all kinds of questions. But he also noted, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he'll be on the podcast with us. He also noted. Uh, or or his admin noted that that there will be some we could disclosures say, yeah. there will but there will be some disclosures right I, I i believe so i believe there will be some news that day that will make people want to come and interact with frank and ask questions correct that's a yeah that's about all we can we uh, we really don't know actually so it's not like we can tell them anything we know but <laughs> I know but ex them. expect some news that day is yes. probably worth saying yes Okay, so yeah, we'll have him on the on the podcast to talk about it. The twenty second of May, that is Friday, and uh, five o'clock start time. Right? Five o'clock Eastern, yes. Five o'clock Eastern. Stick around to the channel here. Hit thumbs up and subscribe, and you'll get notified. Uh, hit the reminder bell, all that good stuff. We're going to set it up way earlier in the week so that we have that you know reminder bell out there, and you can just tick it, and 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 we'll get you back in here to. Uh, to watch us knuckleheads uh, have a little chat with Frank, our buddy Frank. I've known Frank for a long time, way back when he was uh, at uh, at Dell for for many years, and he's a good friend. So it'll be good to see him. All right, let's uh, let's finish up and uh, get done with this thing. Microsoft's Surface Go Two and Surface Book Three, uh, and the Surface Buds. Those looked pretty cool. Um, they were announced announced this week, and um, I'm a little mixed. I got to be honest, I keep expecting Surface products to get a, a refreshed design signature. Um, you know, these are refreshed uh, interior components, uh, which is great. Um, certainly Ice Lake is a very welcome uh, update for Surface Book 3, um, as are the uh, 1660 Ti Max-Q configs and 1650. Uh, gobs of uh, solid state storage. Um, Surface Go 2, powered by Pentium Gold and um, a Core M, uh, M3. Um, looks like 8th gen, though, right? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. What are your thoughts on these, Marco? I know you're a Microsofty. I, I don't think I am anymore. <laughs> um, you know, they phoned it in the last few generations. Yeah, I have strong opinions on Bill Gates now with all this crap going on in the world. I I, I don't know. I, I should I should probably defer to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're biting your yeah, tongue? Yeah. Come on, that's what yeah. people. Yeah. You have, let's have some hard hitting stuff here, man. Don't hold back. All right, so the, the Surface Go <laughs> Two, really the only one I would even possibly consider is the Core M version. Like you don't want to buy a Pentium Gold tablet. You just don't, especially with four gig or eight, you know, with four gig of RAM. It, like, just why is that one even being released? Don't, don't buy that. No one should buy a three ninety nine Pentium Gold tablet. Um, you move up to the to the Surface Book three, and that I I was never a huge fan of that design. I think it's weird having that space where the where the hinge is, and when you have it closed, you have that big wide open space. Um, and for basically every generation, there's been weirdness when you detach the tablet. So to see like nothing change in terms of that design, they just moved to Ice Lake. Yeah, it's great, you know, leading edge mobile CPU architecture. And but what, what manufacturer was it a few years ago that had a very similar kind of hinge design that was based on like a a watch? But it that was sat Lenovo. More, it was Lenovo. Yeah, it they, they had flush, the watch, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, the watch band hinge. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I just it. 
it just there, I guess with the type of design and what Microsoft's going for, trying to be like Apple to keep that same design signature, so there's no denying like this is what this product is. I'm just getting bored. Yeah, I you know, and and I agree with you. That that's that's what st- st- struck with me here. I'm I'm cool with with the um with the materials uh keeping with the materials. And so in other words, there's obviously a um flat matte gray uh thing that Microsoft has, you know, gone with. That's clearly a surface sort of look, okay? That that matte brushed uh brushed aluminum matte gray finish. Um Th- those, you know, sticking with the color palette makes sense to me. Sticking with the finish palette makes sense to me. I, I agree. What, what sort of, you know, I was looking for something. Just I need, I need a revel, you know, a little bit more iteration in the design, some refinement into the in the design, like we see from folks at Dell and Lenovo. Every time they come out with with a new machine and in, in, that's been in a series, whether you talk ThinkPad or whether you talk XPS or any of these iconic brands that have been around for yeah, heck decades um you always see some sort of refinement um dell would make smaller tweaks this time around with xps they finally made some bigger tweaks and i think it really helps a lot um microsoft is like yep yeah, here's the same skins basically um have a nice day <laughs> <laughs> you know i, I it, it, yeah i'm, I'm kind of scratching my head too um I, I think I, I forget what generation it was. It might have been the Skylake generation, where Microsoft got burned on on one of the designs in terms of thermals, and they had to scramble to fix it. And I think they just went too conservative moving forward. Like they don't jump on leading edge stuff as fast as they should. You know, like you have a brand new Surface Book Three coming now when Tiger Lake's going to be here in a few months. You know, like I, I mean, I guess they had to introduce something. It, but it just seems like they're a day late, a dollar short lately. Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope they turn it around a little bit. Um, you know, I think the Surface Book Three has the, the design has merit. I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, poke poke at it completely. But it's kind of like, eh, yeah. I think I think maybe some some refinement there is in order. And and you know, the nice thing is you do have some horsepower to work with. You have you have significant horsepower now to work with in this machine um in in still that you know nice trim form factor um i i I don't understand why just dual core in the surface go to it's it's all dual core all the way up to the core m so um yeah um dual core dual core four thread tablet especially Um, when surface was introduced as you know microsoft saying this is how we want microsoft devices to be you know get on our level and then to just keep doing the same thing for yeah. I don't even know how many years it's been now they're supposed to set the bar right for the OEM ecosystem and uh, be sort of halo devices hmm. I don't know I don't know Microsoft uh, surface headphones too uh, and earbuds um, look pretty cool I want to hear them that's key for me headphones of any kind whether it be earbuds or cans, it's all about the acoustics. I don't care what they look like. You, I got to put them on and, and hear gloriousness. Those look pretty nice. I like the flat. That's one of the things I'm not big on with with cans. If you're going to strap some cans on your head, don't make them these gaudy, ridiculous things. Those look pretty minimalistic, right? Those look pretty good. Yeah, they don't, they don't look bad. I can't wear regular earbuds. Like regular earbuds, every single pair I've ever tried just fall out of my ear. I need something with a hook over the ear. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's weird, especially like if I'm on a plane and I'm like eating a snack with the earbuds. As soon as I chew, they fall out of my ear. Um, and I don't want to carry big giant headphones around. So I, I would love to find a nice set of buds that I like, wireless buds that I like, and I haven't had any luck. So maybe these are them. I have, I have to try them out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any other questions in the chat before we uh, before we say goodbye to everyone here? We're getting to the end uh, of the Joe hour. Joe says, why, "Why do these devices come with keyboards included uh, in, in in a corporate pro user device?" I, I'm not sure if he asked that question properly. I guess in, in corporate you'd want the keyboard. Um, oh, I, maybe do they not come with the keyboards? Is that what he's trying to say? I didn't. Why don't I didn't, they? The Surface Go Two might not. How could that not? Yeah. 
But I mean, Microsoft has sold the keyboard separately. Like the whole yeah. Surface Go Two line should disappear in favor of Qualcomm powered stuff. The, <laughs> I, I mean, obviously mm-hmm. the play is for for lower price and and battery life with, and you have the one model with LTE connectivity. Why muddle the waters? Just get rid of all that, and just go Qualcomm. Have Especially a super low power, you know. How good the ARM processors are with Windows now, and how much they're able to do natively. The emulation for certain apps isn't as bad as it used to be. For well, this that... market of user, like a low power user, they're they're perfectly fine. So like, mm-hmm. just get that, rid of all these. That and you can throw in a five a five G modem. You get four G four G LTE in the Surface Go twos. You get you get throw in a five G modem and future proof it that much more. Um, I don't know if Wi Fi six is on these things. Um, yeah, just a little, just a little weird, right? A little weird, Microsoft. A little, little weird. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and with that, we're let's uh, let's. <laughs> oh, we're definitely weird. We don't make any bones about that, though. Um, well, hey, let's uh, let's let's call it a day and uh, remind folks again. Tune in next week, Friday, five p.m. We will have Frank Azor from AMD on the podcast with us. We're going to move it to Friday for Frank and uh, Frank Friday. We should, we should make that a regular thing, maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, five o'clock. And uh, so we'll have that man on and we'll be talking uh, all things AMD with him that day. Um, Twitter.com slash hot hardware, where you can find us on the web, YouTube.com slash hot hardware vids, thumbs up, subscribe, Facebook, hot hardware. We're everywhere. Um, follow us, subscribe, and uh, we will try and keep you entertained and informed. Right, Marco? We will do our best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we, we bid you adieu. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>